Okay, so there we go, all totally dry. Um, as I said, this paint, you have to watch it, it's like an eggshell effect, um, because even now, although this feels very hard, very dry, everything else, handling it a moment ago, move my hand away, you can feel it sort of tackiness on here, and it is that thing, I say, eggshell effect. Feels dry, looks dry, hold it for the wing for a few moments, warm hand, softens paint, fingerprint in there, pretty hard to get rid of, okay? So just be careful as you handle this stuff for a good couple of days. Now, you might be able to see here, we've already unmasked just down here, purely because I couldn't wait, okay? So all I'm gonna do is unmask this now and see exactly what we've got. Now, tape and uh, the actual oil-free tack don't mix too brilliantly, as you can probably see, but there's a little trick here I'll show you in a moment. So just for the moment, we're gonna get that off. Okay, and then down the front here, what we're gonna do now is attempt to pull this off. So grab yourself a bit, and then use the tape, the actual stuff itself, to peel itself off, because sometimes it will leave gooey bits behind, okay? So you sort of go along like this, and then if you tap back, you can get the bits off, okay? So if you are left with bits left over, that's how you get them off. And already, just holding it just like that, I can feel it getting really, really soft. There we go, there's our demarcation mark between the two. It's quite rough, but it's exactly what we want, okay? We've got lots of different decals and things going down there. But as you can see, if we can get this one off down here, we've got what we wanted. Okay. <clears throat> On this front area, so we've got a nice sort of wave to it. Wave down, but it's not as hard as if you would do something like these rear ones. Now these rear ones will be quite hard, but you can see we used a torn piece of tape just to give us a little bit of texture so it wasn't a perfect line. But as you can see, very, very stark compared with just a little bit of a soft edge, and that's exactly what we wanted. Now we're not we're too worried around the front here. You can see we've got it how we wanted it anyway down here, but certainly we've got a shark's mouth to go down here, so don't worry too much about this little bit of uh, the actual tack is on there. So that's all going to be covered. Okay, and we just whip these bits off. Okay, remember you can use your tack again at any point. Okay, now moment of truth is these bottom ones here. Okay, so what we want to do is just gently pull these up and keep moving my hand everywhere so we don't stick. Okay, so there's one. And here comes number two. See, do it blind. So I'm going to turn it over. It should be all perfect, he says, hoping. And it is. But as you can see, this is the type of effect we wanted. We wanted to have it with this sort of staining down in here. So you've got a little bit of difference on the panel lining. We've got a little bit of staining on here on the white. Now this up here, Probably be a little bit hard. Just be careful when you're pulling off here. You've got the old uh, PTO tubes up on the top. Careful how you rip these all off. Now, I know for a fact the fuel dump valve on the back has come away, okay? Like there, just be careful you don't do that. All right, so I've just bent that one, doing exactly what I'm telling you not to do, but luckily it's held place. Now, the refueling or dump valve is right here. I've snapped it off whilst trying to tape it all down. So this little guy will have to be glued right here on the back, just like so. It's only a two minute job, so I'm gonna put it over on the bench somewhere safe so we know we've got it. But there we go, that's our tomb all done. Okay, what we're gonna do next, let this dry off completely, okay? Come back to it a little bit later on, and we're gonna just do a little bit of post shading on top of some of these panels. Now, we're gonna do it in a gray color to sort of weather it down, darken it down, everything else like that, and sort of blend it together, all right? Then we're gonna come around, mask it all up absolutely everywhere, and we can start doing all this metallic work for this clamshell area at the back where we'd be using sort of metalizer paints to give us those hues, those nice blues, metal things like that. At the same time, we can do the tail planes because they're going to need it as well. Start them together just down here on both sides so we can do all of those. But for the moment, I just want it to dry for a few more hours, then we can come back into it again, get that paintwork onto it, let that dry, do the metal work and we can really start to push forward on this one. 
Okay, so there we go. There's our model done. A little bit drier, totally handleable now. Uh, before we had that eggshell effect, pretty much over that now. So what we've got is a situation where the underside is absolutely fine. Really happy how that is. It's just that the actual top side, you can see, just looks a little bit creamy. Now the colour is correct. We've got the pre-shading coming through just a little bit. But what I want to do is just break it up. Now, two things you have to remember. First of all, this is obviously gloss finish. The actual paint that we use, this uh, H315, is a gloss paint. So immediately it will change your perception of the actual paint. Point in fact, if you look at this compared to a phantom that I did, it looks totally the different colour, yet it's not. It's exactly the same colour, it's just that the other one's got a flat coat on it. As soon as you put a flat coat on this, it will lighten it slightly. Okay, so don't be too put off by finishes you get. So sometimes you might have this situation where it looks too strong, too dark, um, and everything else, it looks too creamy. But trust me, you put a flat coat on, it will lighten it, it will look more like a more of a grey colour than a sort of uh, cream colour that it is at the moment and we can get away from this sort of magnolia look. So what we're going to do though is just going to lightly weather some of these areas in just a tiny bit. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a mix of two colours. So we just check our airbrush. What we're going to do is just put a drop of neat thinners just into here, blow it through. Trigger's always springy, everything else like that. It's nice and sharp and punchy. Okay, it's exactly what we want. Now, we're going to mix two paints together. We're going to take Tamiya Flat, okay, XF54, and then we're going to take some of this uh, H315 colour again, which is obviously the colour we used here. Now, I've got very little of both, okay, so we can make a mix. What this will do, obviously, we've got a gloss and we've got a flat. It's going to make a little bit of a satin, so it will give us a sort of tonal difference. So not only is it a colour difference, Obviously, it'll be a little bit flatter as you look across it. Now, you know, you know, in the end, we're actually going to go along and we're going to flatten this off totally anyway. But this will just give you a, a rough idea of how it's going to go. And also, it should give us a nice look to our model. So what we're going to do, just give these a bit of a shake. We're not going to need much. It's going to be a very, very thin coat of paint there in here. Now, this is where I don't want to drop my screw in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add thinners into here. As I said, I've got very, very little left just into here. I've got that stainless steel nut in here. We can just give it a shake. It'll be okay for touch-ins, but it's certainly not going to be good for any paint. But it's a nice way of using up your last bit. So as you can see, we have it in here. It's nice and thin. Okay, so it's literally like milk. All right, then we're going to take our grey colour. So we can get the top off. Okay, now we're not going to need lots of this, a couple of drops, just going in, just like so. Take our mixing brush and give it a mix. And what we're trying to do is just get a slightly grey tinge to it. We're not trying to change anything, we're not trying to change colours, anything else like that. We're literally just trying to get a, a bit of a colour going on here. Now we've got the white areas down the back, not too worried about getting overspray on these, these, or the bottom of the tail because it's going to actually act as a weathering effect for us. Okay, so we just pop this back in, and then all we're going to do is literally just going to pop around some of the panels and spray. Now when you're spraying this colour or another, try and get yourself a light effect. When I say a light effect, try and find a shine, and you can see the flatness sort of going on. And all we're doing is just sort of centres of panels. Okay. And we're just picking out little areas. Just hot walkway just a little bit. Okay, and that's all we're trying to do. If I do half, and then you should see a point of difference between the two. You might be able to see this sort of mottling going on down here. It's a little bit strong at the moment, that's because it's quite wet. As you dry it down, it will just all fade in. But hopefully you can see it just gives us a slight mottle to the paintwork. And then after you've finished it, just give it a light blow over the entire thing. Okay, but as you can see, we're not getting it appearing on any of this white work at all. 
So we're just going to pop around now and do little areas, picking out just little bits as we go round, and it should just help mottle it all down. But again, a bit like the pre-shading that we did before, just keep this random as you like. Yeah, right away over everything. And there we have it. And what it does, I don't know obviously how much the camera can tell, but it's already changed the colour of this. Now this is actually looking a lot more sort of lighter. It's a sort of better colour that we're looking for and everything else. But it just makes the pre-shading stand out a little bit more, okay? Because we can see these areas, but also it gives us these parts on here. Now we are going to come back and do post-shading a little bit later. But what I wanted to do was just show you about changing the actual the colour of it. And as I said, I know it's very difficult with the different light conditions we've got going on here today. But trust me, it's just one of those ones that just makes it a little bit better. Now, as I said, we're going to do post-shading once the deckling is all completed and everything else to grime them in to make them look weathered in and everything else like that but certainly at the moment really happy how that's looking now so next up what we're going to do let that dry okay make sure it's completely gone off and then we're going to come back and we're going to mask up around this rear area around this clamshell I have to hold it slightly different because it's slightly wet on top okay just around on the back end here everything else like that so we can do the metal work and then obviously we can do the burner cans we can do these rear ones as soon as that's done clear coat right the way over absolutely everything to protect it for one and then secondly we can get on then with the decaling and everything else like that okay so masked up pretty straightforward uh, we just used six mil tamiya tape to curve it round these rear exhausts and push them in now get a little bit of crimping going on just make sure they're all pressed nice and flat in there make sure all your tape is stuck down so then obviously we just come along right up the top and remember to cover up the tip on the end all important now the clamshell area on the bottom here notoriously really one of the most hardest things you can do in scale modeling is to try and recreate this type of effect now the trouble we have and if we have a look over on our reference book <clears throat> This exactly is what we're trying to get. Now, hopefully you won't get too much glare off the pages here. As you can see, especially up here, you can see different colours of the metal. Now, a lot of the times, so some of these plates get removed, replaced, so they're at different ages of their life as well. They tend to be, you know, basically made up of different types of metals, things like that, and riveters. All of them have to take on around about a thousand degrees of heat. So obviously this does cause some quite weird and wacky coloration effects. Certainly as you can see down here, this is a great example just here of bluing. Now we've all seen bluing at various things. The Phantom though is really up for it. You can probably see also down here the amount of discoloration and grime and dirt that builds up around this area. Obviously these engines aren't modern ones, they're not you know, um, you know, know, high performance engines, low smoke, everything else. These are the old sooty engines which do kick out a lot of grease, grime and dirt as they're burning. Okay, So this is how we end up with this type of effect. So that's why you end up sometimes with perhaps some of these clam areas, they've been changed, this is a newer one, newer one, older ones, they're different colours. Any phantom that you look at will be different, every single one. I don't care what you look at, different ages, things like that, it's very rare you will find any of them the same. They're all going to have this situation where perhaps you have different things, um, you know, and also the thing is you have to take into account different lighting conditions, different angles gives different effect. This is metal. Obviously down here we've got a great reflective shot showing these blues up here. For all we know this one here could be the same tail off the same aircraft from a different angle so you're not seeing the bluing as much okay and everything else but as you look around I'm assuming these are off the same aircraft okay because the tail hook isn't up in any of these apart from this one down here. They're all in the down position all right. Over here we've got a different one and it doesn't look like it's too bad maybe from a museum something else like that obviously uh, check your references for different aircraft obviously the J type use a later engine to something like the BN version the early C version things like that have the shorter engine cones at the back but basically just looking through these areas you can see different types of things on obviously you get museum ones I wouldn't take too much notice of those all right what we're looking for is the ones that are actually in the field but this particular section here shows it off very very nicely 
and shows us this burnt discoloration look to them as they go through and these different colors of metalling but usually they are darker than you think a lot of people will come along and do these silver personally I like to do them darker colors so we're certainly using colors in our case we're going to be using uh, things like titanium which I believe it's made with anyway stainless steel because I find that's a great color for sort of weathering things like that and magnesium okay so between all three when you look at them we get this type of shade effect all right now the other thing as well I've been banging on about it for many many weeks now about me just using acrylic paints and keeping away from the nasties this is probably as nasty as you'll get these are lacquer based paints they smell they're very very toxic I should think and everything else but it's the only thing that I know that makes a good metal color the other thing with these as well they are buffable by buffable it means you give them a rub you can actually polish them change the color of them uh, and give them great weathering effects and things like that so they're a little bit more high-tech than your standard type of paints now guns do a range so I would use their steel their stainless steel things like that and their iron colors but I just happen to have a load of these lying around at the moment so I'm tending to use them up but I will be using them all for metal work on aircraft because really I don't think you can find a better way the other thing as well you might want to look at I'll just move the reference book out of the way before it gets sprayed um, masking up I've done quite a, a small job here because metalizer paints do tend to be quite localized in their spraying they don't tend to go for miles all right uh, if you're using acrylic paint, I would mask everything and go right the way through it all. So it may be worth, he said, just going to grab it. Just grabbing some kitchen roll and just taking the time just to mask a little bit further. So you might want to come along just down here. Something like that. Okay, and then you can cover up around the front here. The other thing as well, doing this, it's quite good because uh, metalizer paints notoriously, uh, especially the buffable ones, tend to get all over your hands or all over your fingers for spraying, everything else like that. This will stop that just a little bit. It'll certainly help it a bit. Uh, this way of doing this probably gonna be something like this. So we just grab some tape. Uh, if you're using metalizer paints as well, something we'll be covering afterwards is sealing them down. Really, really important because if you don't seal them down, that's when you end up making a huge, huge mess with them. Uh, and that's normally where people handle them, okay, and go around and then leave a huge, great silver fingerprints on absolutely everything. Okay. As I say, if somebody would invent Tammy a tape that doesn't end up going everywhere please contact me because otherwise it does this okay. but make sure you've got no holes going down so I a little bit more just a tiny bit there and a quick right around the front again that will do us nicely okay there we go, all sealed up, all protected. Okay, again, double check, make sure you're all pushed down because if this stuff gets underneath and then ends up, you're gonna have to respray your entire tail and everything else like that. So, first thing we need to do is prep your airbrush because we go, obviously we've had acrylic paints going through this. So we've got here, this is what I use to clean out my airbrushes. I've got a little bit of lacquer thinners. So what we're doing is just putting it around the inside of the color cup everything else like that okay taking our brush giving it a rub round all around the inside because what I'm trying to do is get rid of any residue from acrylic because the two don't like to mix okay blowing it through so we now know we've lined the entire of the airbrush with enamels now okay Working your way through, uh, metalizer paint, it doesn't tend to matter so much if you're going to be using light over dark, things like that, because they tend to cover very, very well. So from our point of view, what we're going to do, we will start with the lightest first, though. Good old shake, make sure you're fine. You should find that they'll make easy work mixing. Now, this stuff, you tend to go through very, very rapidly. I always use a pipette for grabbing it, because I find tipping it doesn't work. And you go through this stuff really, really quickly, okay? always put your lids on when you finish because one it stinks secondly it will evaporate quickly health and safety the extractor goes on immediately with this 
Okay, check your flow. Turn your air pressure down, because obviously this stuff is like water. Okay, so I'm down, I'm still spraying at high compared to a lot of people. I'm probably only down to around about 15 PSI. Okay, and what we're gonna do is just lightly mist on the coat. Because what you're doing with this stuff is plating rather than spraying, all right? You're not plating this. Now, what I should have done, and I haven't done yet, to be honest, is grab all the metal work bits, such as the nozzles, the arrestor hook, and everything else. So, I'd, if I was you, before you start, go and get them all ready. You can spray them at the same time. Okay, first shade goes on. Now, remember, it is all buffable, this. So, what I'm going to do is buff it at the end, but you are going to need a good coat on here. Don't plug this stuff, literally just spray it lightly on. Looking wet, just dry, so cut to air, push forward. Make sure you do the fronts. Close your backs. Find some more white to stand this up against. Dry it down. Okay. So, fine with that, we'll just blow that colour out. good scrunch up to use this you can use a cloth as well what we're going to do just very lightly dust this over because what we're trying to do is just take off the rough texture because this lot will leave behind a little bit of a rough texture you can see it comes off on the cloth so don't worry about if you see this roughness because it will polish in okay I'm just giving it a light rub just to take off. Now if you kept rubbing this you will end up with a very nice metal finish. Obviously we don't want to rub that far. We're just trying to tidy all this up. Okay so you might be thinking oh that's looking quite good. Happy with that. But what we want to do is take this on 
few steps further. So next colour up, have a look. So we're going to go with, I think we're going to use the titanium. Okay, again. Top off. There we go. Oh, that's a full one. Right. Drawing up, we're not going to need gallons of this. You can mix, don't worry about changing the colour because it just melts into each other. Top back on. That's our flow now. For this, what I'm going to do is just poke it down these inside these exhausts, and we are literally just going to blow them out. Just trying to put some silver down into those. All right. Now, if you want to, you can do this freehand. Just make sure you're happy with your flow, and you can pick out perhaps a little bit. So you're just sort of changing the colour of it just a little bit. Try and pair them. So I'm sort of pre-shading or post-shading around, but hopefully we'll be able to blend all these in. type of effect going on. Back in with our cloth. I'm just going to give it a bit of a rub so we sort of just blend them all in. To see what we've got. Okay, so we sort of get this metallizing, all right, clamshell area going on. Now you could come in with blues and things like that if you wanted to. Um, obviously I've got to do the nozzles yet so we'll take care of those. But what we've got now is this lighter colour. So what I'm going to do with this is just grab a tiny bit on a cocktail stick. of cocktail sticks so we're going to load this up a little bit and all we're going to do is just we're going to go along and just going to do some of these rivets you could use a brush but i find a cocktail stick works and what this will do with any luck will give us that sort of look of riveting that we saw in the pictures It's one of these things, in different lights, you'll see it in different ways. And then what you can actually do with these tail planes is come along, grab a business card or something, like so. So we've got a couple of old business cards. And what you can do is you just place on there. There. And you can just blow in your midpoint between both. So 
So you get the strength from the bar through the middle, and if we just do the underside. So, we'll just let that dry, same on the other side. You could tape it, but the trouble is I find if you tape over metalliser paint, it does tend to pull it. So this way you don't run the risk of ruining your metal finish at all. So then, again, taking our cloth, we can then just lightly buff. And by the time this has had a wash, as you see in different lights it does it. So what you can actually do then, come along with some darker colours and lighters and put some heat shims into this. And again, it doesn't look very nice, give it a buff. And it really does come to life. Now you can actually use your finger to buff it as well. Which if you really want that nice metal look, as I say, it comes up. So you need to polish these in. Same goes around the back end. You can use your finger now to really give these a nice metal hue to it all. Because you sort of blend the colours in together and polishing them up. Don't push too hard, otherwise you end up going through. You certainly can give them a bit of a rub to liven it all up. And there we go, something like that. Pretty straight and easy, so what we're gonna do, let those dry, clean up here, get the nozzles done, which is straightforward, just the same principle as really doing these tail planes onto the nozzles. Get them done, the arrestor hook goes in as well, that's metal, that'll be straightforward. Let it dry, and then we can actually come along, give it a gloss coat right the way over to protect ourselves and the metalizer paint from going everywhere, because obviously it's on our fingers. And when that's done, we can get on with the deck lid.